Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. I'm having all sorts of problems today. It's April 7th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the very podcast of indeterminate length and indeterminate technical difficulties. For some reason, the theme music seemed really soft to me. I don't know mm. if it did to you guys. Not Sounded really. fine to me. Yeah. Well, in any case, this week, let's just eat it. Eat it, eat it. And today we're talking okay. about cheese. Cheese, glorious cheese. Tastes mighty inviting. Only one person hadn't heard that before. I played it. I'm sure you've heard it before. No, actually, I don't think I have. You haven't heard what? it? What? Like when you were a Maybe. kid or anything? Okay, oh. I'm putting the link on the damn doc. <laughs> there is a Could link from YouTube. It is of multiple commercials from this uh, series. God, I just don't. It doesn't. It's from know. the 80s. And it's such a jingle. And it's like. Um, <laughs> it's making me laugh because when you listen to it, it sounds like it's right out of like a chorus line. Or one of those uh-huh. musicals from Broadway. It just cracks me up. Yeah. Way. Yes. It, it it does sound familiar. It, it, vaguely. Hold on. Maybe if I look at this link. Give me one moment. It cracks it's me not... up that way. So we're, I, we're, we're giving Damon a moment. I don't know this. Like it looks familiar. Okay, I can't. I can't look at all of this. That's gonna take forever. I, I, I mean, a picture half. like the commercial or something, but it was instantly recognizable. Like I heard it, and I'm like, "Oh, I remember hearing this when I was a kid." It's from the National Dairy Board, and God bless politics and like marketing and advertising to fucking sell product. Yeah, it just. Uh... I don't, I, it's not, I'm, I'm muting it so we can just look and see if maybe one of these commercials looks more familiar. It's not the, it's not the commercial, it's the jingle. That's what I yeah. distinctly mm-hmm. remember. And I don't. The one that I was thinking of was the cartoony one with the, the Hanka, Hanka, Hora, Hanka cheese. Like oh! That. that was the one I was thinking you were going to do. Yes, 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 yes. Hankering for but, a hunk of cheese. Yeah. Yeah, that one I was, was what I was thinking it was going to be. It's okay. It's okay. We're fine. It's fine. Like, <laughs> I just... Yeah. Anyway, that being said... We're having a very cheesy episode today, and I'm not talking about mac and cheese. We already did that. Yes. So... Okay, I'm trying to vamp that. while Gary. Uh, Sorry, it was playing in the background because I was adding the link for David's commercial that he mentioned. 
Thank you. But it's like an hour, or it's not an hour, sorry, it's a minute long, and it had this whole intro thing, and I was like, is this it? And then he said the line, so, yeah. It's yeah. Anyways. Anyways, like, yes, this this amazing byproduct um, of food has, you know, ruined digestive systems <laughs> across the globe. Um, it has also, you know, fattened people, given them sustenance. It's done all sorts of crazy stuff. So, yeah, last time, uh, eight weeks ago, eight episodes ago, I should say, technically, uh, we did a Let's Talk About Food mac and cheese. And this time, it's all about the cheese, baby. Nothing but the cheese. Nothing but the cheese. Nothing but the cheese, baby. <laughs> <laughs> COL 727 was Let's Talk About Food, Mac and Cheese. Yes. So this time around, it's uh, just us talking about cheese, why we like cheese, what our favorite <laughs> cheeses are. Do we have favorite cheese dishes? And, cheese and hopefully none of so us cut the cheese. Ways to... There's hard cheeses, there's soft cheeses, there's melting cheeses, there's processed cheeses, which are usually referred to as processed cheese product. Uh-huh. Because they use cheese to make the product. Yes. But it's still a category I would still consider to be cheese. Yeah. Yeah. There's... Come on. Back up to the top of this thing. What are the different types? Uh, eight varieties. Interesting. I mean, I don't think there's a country in the world that doesn't have its own version of this product. Huh. I just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I love cheese. I've loved cheese since, for as long as I can remember. Since like I was Wikipedia little. alone has. Mm. probably over 70 different countries that have cheeses like either one or i think we're the crown daddy of them all we have 45 different cheeses in our country wow nope maybe england has 49 rat bastards well to be 49 fair, pages of cheeses to be fair they probably have the most popular cheese According to Wikipedia, the European Union, oh. UK not included, produces the most cheese. Well, that's because the I UK need... is no longer in the European Union. I have to stand corrected. Italy has 72 pages of its own cheeses. Yeah. Oh, my wow. God. I'm still not getting it right. This, this is an alpha order. I can't do nothing right today. France has 107. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, so the crown goes to them. We're like in third place. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, I was just thinking about this as we were like getting ready in pre-show and we were like putting in our favorite cheeses and our dishes and stuff. And I was like, is there not a time that you wouldn't just like snack or incorporate cheese in a dish? I mean, I'm sure there's there's some, you know, yeah. things where you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But even then, <laughs> sometimes you can be surprised. I think it depends on the type of cheese. Right. Like most people would say cheese and fish do not go together. And yet McDonald's sells a filet of fish with a slice of processed cheese on it. Well, and usually I get the cheese, like, when I get a tuna, tuna sandwich from Subway. Mm -hmm. I have them put on cheese. Right. Because yeah. we, are, we, are, we are children of a generation that tuna casserole was a thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And it may have had shredded, <laughs> or if you po, sliced cheese yeah. melted on top of it. Yes. <laughs> I just, I remember like tuna melts, like that was a thing, mm -hmm. like fish and cheese, while it's not usually a thing, I, 
I know it can be a thing. I'm sure it is a thing in certain places. Keys can... Keys, I think, I feel, is a great enhancement to most dishes, um, to keep it simple. Like, most dishes. Not everything, but most dishes. Like, I... I don't think I could... I would see adding keys to like like Chinese food. Like that's something I don't think I would I don't think I could see happening. Traditional? No. Americanized bastardized? A little bit. Maybe. Mm. Like I think of like cream cheese wontons. Oh, true. I forgot about those. But but that's just Fucking deep fried shit with cheese in it. I mean, it, like, yeah. let's be it's honest. It's the wonton wrapper with cream cheese. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. It's the vessel that gets the cheese in cheese. And you, actually, basically. that's my preferred <laughs> version of, of, of the uh, uh, wonton. Mm. Um, also, cheese is great for getting kids to eat their vegetables. Yes. Very totally, true. A, totally, totally, totally a thing. When I was a kid, I refused to eat veggies often, which I'm sure a lot of kids did. But, like, the closest thing I ever got was broccoli with cheese sauce. Mm-hmm. That was about it. We, we did yep. cheese with cheese, which actually the cheese was cheese whiz. Mm. Ooh, the 80s. They were so. Oh, that was a thing. <laughs> I don't know why that. that I mean. That. That, that did not sit right with my spirit. You you cannot have a good uh, Philadelphia cheesesteak without the whiz. And we're not talking Donna Summer here, but anyways. You mean you mean Diana Ross? Damn it! I knew I was going to get it wrong. I went to say it, and I almost said Diana <laughs> Summer. And then I was like, no. Her name's Donna. <laughs> And it's still the wrong person. Yeah. Anywho, but Diana yeah, gay. Ross she's and, gay. and also uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson was in there. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, like I mean, I think about it. Like every once in a blue moon, I get like a like a craving. Mm-hmm. And my craving is Velveeta. Really? Which is not technically cheese. It's a cheese product. Mm. Um. American. But it's 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 yeah like I, I like every once in a blue moon I'll get like a thing, and that is the one thing I know that it has repeated in in my lifetime that I'll be like yeah I want some and then I go to the grocery store and I see how expensive it is and I'm like mm, maybe not because <laughs> that shit's gone up in price in the past like five to ten years. And... Look, if you're gonna get get Velveeta, just get like the Velveeta cheese slices. It's kind of like the Kraft singles except they're it's Vel- they're Velveeta recipe which seems really weird because you it, have uh, Kraft American cheese singles and you have Velveeta cheese uh, singles. Hmm. They're the same thing as far as I can tell. Wow. But I think the Velveeta, uh, Velveeta is a different recipe. Mm. Don't quote Probably. me on any of that, but that's yeah. my only justification of why they're selling it like that. Or Kraft is scamming us. <laughs> I mean, anything's possible. Velveeta Kraft is... owns Velveeta. Oh, yeah. Fair. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure who owns <laughs> Kraft Heinz. Yep. Yep. It, it, right on the box says says Kraft. Yeah. So bringing that up, bringing Velveeta up, it, it brings back a memory. And one of my favorite, I was in high school and someone brought the crock pot of, and it was essentially, um, I think it was sausage, like hot Italian sausage and Velveeta mixed together in like a queso, essentially. Although it didn't have like 
um, peppers and spices. It didn't have stuff. a salsa. It didn't have a salsa thing in it. It was just meat and cheese. Mm-hmm. God, it was so fucking good. Like, well, I have I mean, no idea. If you search for recipes for like Super Bowl queso, right? They're gonna say a full block of Velveeta <laughs> chopped up in the cubes and mm-hmm. tossed yeah. into a crock pot. With one can of Rattel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah, God. Is that spelling? Am I spelling it right? So there's going to be a ton of links on our site because we've got lots of Wikipedia links to different things, including the cheese types. Uh, so that being the case, uh, why don't we go... Let me rearrange, even though I was first. Let's go in alpha order. Mr. Damon, what are your oh, favorites? Yeah. Lord... So as I was saying, I, I I love fucking love cheese. So it's hard to pick a favorite. So I picked two <laughs> here, but I did um, I did a kind of spectrum, and um, I chose Colby um, as my um, first cheese. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love cheddars. I love those like yellow harder cheeses and Colby is if I were to think about it is one of the top ones for me um and I can't really put my finger on why I just think it's a good milder flavor um it doesn't get too sharp you can use it in pretty much everything uh anything really it's a great shred it's a great you know um you can mix it with, you know, Col- you get Colby Jack all the time. Like Colby Jack is something that I've often heard about he- you hear. And it just, it just tastes so good. Like it's, it's just a good milder flavored um, cheese. Um, yeah. And, well, I, and, I, and I, so Colby is considered part of a category of technique called washing. Mm. Where the curd that makes cheese ultimately is washed in warm water. It lowers the acidity. So it makes for a milder taste. Right. So yeah. like Colby Gouda, um, I think it's pronounced Adam or Edom. Can't remember. Um, are kind of in that, that grouping. So I hear you on that. Like when you're like, it's versatile, like mm-hmm. it can, it can be a supporting role. It can be a major player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and finally, I didn't. I learned about Colby randomly from a friend from my church. I went over to her house, and we were doing like we were there for like it was a like a play date or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I remember her having Colby cheese, and she had. Um, we made those grilled cheese with the, the, um, it's that pan or that machine that you basically put bread in it and put a piece of cheese and close it and it becomes these little pockets of well, I was grilled gonna, cheese. First I was going to say a panini press, then I was going to say a George Foreman grill, but it's neither <laughs> of those. It's no, actually it's like the, the, it's the pocket making sandwich yeah. machine thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, wish I, I don't remember what it's called, but, um, and I remember it and I just, I loved it. It was so, it was like the best thing ever. Um, so on the other side of this spectrum, um, to go a little exotic ish in a sense, um, I love feta cheese. I love um, feta and goat cheese are two of my favorite, just like stronger flavored cheese. Feta is a little, again, milder, um, but I, I love feta cheese. I love Mediterranean. I, it just, it always adds that briny, salty flavor that sometimes you want on a dish and it's cheese. So Yummy, 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 yummy. Yeah, it's feta is described as in the mouth that it is tangy, slightly salty, mildly sour, and possibly with a spicy finish, like pepper or ginger. Mm-hmm. 
and mm-hmm. a hint of sweetness, which I think is fair. Like I, yeah. I think of feta as like a, um, and uh, what do I want to call it? An enhancement cheese. Mm-hmm. So like you put it on a salad or yeah. like you sprinkle it over something like it's, right. it's not a significant player, but usually I think that's because feta has a stronger flavor profile. So you don't need as much of it. Right. It's, it's more Agreed. of a condiment. You know, most. Kind of. Yeah. Con- I think kind of condiment seasoning. It's kind of somewhere in that vicinity is the mm-hmm. exact taxonomy. I'm not sure of, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were just like just last week. We were at um, we went to um, a big Mediterranean, yeah, Mediterranean restaurant, um, Baba, and here in town, um, it's an old, uh, I think it's an old Captain D's, like it, <laughs> the building, <laughs> but um, they do a, they do as a side like a Greek salad and. Um, one of the highlights is, of it for me is just the, high, the sprinkle of the feta cheese. It just adds just that wonderful salty, briny flavor that I want in a a salad like that. And um, it just came to mind. Watermelon feta salad. Just mm. delicious. 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 Yeah, that's a really good, like, sweet, salty kind of balance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. There we go. Uh, for myself, I also, uh, like, have two selections. My first one is Munster. Mm. M-U-E-N-S-T-E-R, for those that aren't familiar it's a semi-soft cheese. Usually, I see it sliced. Um, it is thought to be an imitation of a cheese that comes from uh, Germany, which I find hmm. interesting from Alsace. Typically has uh, a orange rind to it, um, kind of described as a little uh, sweet and nutty seasoning, kind of um, similar to like a cheddar or a Colby, but it's typically soft. Um, yeah. So it's not very dry or crumbly. And to me, it's a great snacking cheese. It's a great sandwich cheese. Um, I wouldn't necessarily think of it. I mean, you could melt it like probably in a grilled cheese, but I wouldn't really try to incorporate it in a dish a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you could, I guess. I just haven't thought of it because usually I don't see it in a block. Like I see it in a package and it's already pre-sliced. Yeah. Um, So that's like one of my go-tos because it's not for me i never think of it as a standard or a typical cheese like i don't see that very much included as an option like especially if you're trying to like have something ordered and made yeah Um, that's true in that case and my other one is gouda um it's considered creamy originally uh coming from the netherlands it has a couple variations. I know a fair amount of people love a smoked Gouda. Yeah. So where the whole cheese is actually um, got some smoke added to it from being exposed um, to the smoking process, which I know I don't necessarily mind. Um, but the <laughs> thing I appreciate is that you can have it with or without. So like it's not automatically going to be that way. So it, it depends on whatever kind of strikes your fancy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also yeah. one of those ones that is good to be aged, I found. Um, yes. Yeah. And apparently, aging a cheese does modify its texture over time. And apparently, um, that ends up turning into flavor enhancement overall like the aging and the oxidation process Mm. so that's why like you can have young cheeses and older cheeses and they will be the same cheese basically but they will taste very different oh no that sounds delicious (laughs) sorry i'm reading the thing for gouda and it says as it ages it develops a 
caramel sweetness and has a slight crunchiness from cheese crystals, especially in older cheeses. In the Netherlands, cubes of Gouda are often eaten as a snack served with Dutch mustard, which not that much. This is the part. Older varieties are sometimes topped with sugar or apple butter. Mm. Can you imagine? <laughs> well, I mean, apples and cheese are a big thing here, you know, from mm -hmm. the U.S. Like, like I still to this day, I, I'd have to look up this the history of this as to why you would have a slice of cheddar cheese with apple pie. Mm. But it works. Mm -hmm. like, I, not, I don't uh, like it. <laughs> For those that don't know, the cheese is not in the pie. Like, the pie is already made, baked the whole bit, and then when the pie is served, you have a slice of cheese with it. Cheddar I, don't, I, I don't understand. To me, those two things so, together. It's so... Which is... Well, I would know you're from Minnesota. It, Never it, mind. The, Never the mind. thing for me is, when it comes to cheese, is I think of cheese as a savory thing. And I don't want that sweetness. I want, if there is any sweetness, I want it to be natural flavoring of something, not with something that's sweet. So <clears throat> having it with apple pie, I want the apple pie. Actually, I more want the filling, but still. <laughs> and the cheese, two separate things. Of course, I'm also one who doesn't enjoy having ice cream with the with my pie. Keep those separate, please. Good old Reddit. There's a thread that talks about the origins of this. Wow. I'm not surprised that someone posted was like, someone could please explain this to me because both of the, both American pie or not American pie, apple pie and cheddar come from England, but from separately like they didn't originate together or whatever so i find mm. it interesting that there's been um, articles from the 1920s and 1930s making reference to having a slice of cheddar with your american or your apple pie god i keep wanting to call it american pie that's so bad of me so yeah Probably have the, even the movie are um, it, it's always the phrase has always been as american as apple pie and you gotta realize it's technically not American, but whatever. Um, well, I think people take that Johnny Appleseed story and like, yeah, end up taking possession of apples like they're you know unique to America. It's in in America, apple pie is very popular. Yeah, like yeah. there can't be a pl there shouldn't be a place that serves pie and not have an apple pie. Fair. That's fair. Out of the many different types of pies that they would have, one of them is going to be apple. Yeah. In one way, shape, or form, whether it's the lattice co covered, the, the full covered, or the Dutch. Um, actually, the Dutch one is my favorite. I like the crumbles mm. on top versus uh, pie crust on top. Huh. But that's beside the point. We're not talking about apple pie. Talk about no, cheese. we're not. And I will say, as as a cheese lover, I am a BWB. A basic white bitch. <laughs> nice. Because, and you can argue all you want, but I'm still saying it. I ended up with four cheeses. Of course you <laughs> did. <laughs> Jeff's busy talking about how basic he is, and yet he has double the amount of cheeses. I mean, to be fair, three of them I would still consider to, to be basic because they're probably some of the most popular cheeses, at least in America. Right. Uh, if not one of them being worldwide. Uh, and one of them is kind of a little bit of an oddball and probably like a take it or leave it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, American. Mm. So I'm, I'm from America. Yeah. And technically it is not a cheese. It is a cheese product. It is made with cheese, but it is not actual cheese. But we use it like cheese. So I'm going that route. I grew up on yes. the Kraft American Singles. 
Mm-hmm. Good mis- Midwest American boy. Although I'm saying that all in a Southern accent, uh, Texan accent. Not Southern, <laughs> Texan. Um, cheddar, which is not from the United States. It is from the UK. A city known as Cheddar is where it originated from. And the process mm-hmm. for making cheddar cheese is called cheddaring. <laughs> cheddar all the way down. Yeah. But unlike Damon, I actually prefer sharp. Not necessarily I, the extra sharp, but yeah, I, I, I like the sharpness, uh, which is probably yeah. why I like cheddar over Colby more. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, and, I'm not gonna 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 decline getting and, some Colby, but and also don't get me don't get me wrong, like I love like cheddar, like I love cheddars too, and I actually. I almost picked the extra sharp white cheddar. Like I, but I was thinking more along the lines something that I would eat constantly. Like, well, uh, so that's where David. I think you're onto something. Like, if I have cheddar, I prefer mild on the regular, but I don't mind a sharp or an extra sharp cheddar. But it's not my. It's not the thing I gravitate to immediately. Like I need to be in the mood for it because it's such a strong, like intense flavor for my palate like it needs to make sense with what i'm having not just as an everyday kind of thing yeah. and to be fair yeah. we're talking about our favorites which doesn't mean we don't love cheeses less uh, much less yeah. <laughs> it's just that if you put these on a cheese board which one am i reaching for first right, well right, right, right. i'm one who's undecidable and like grabs for different things also my cheeses two of them probably could could work similarly but two of them are for specific for more for specific circumstances right but i still love it for being it anyways right so american cheddar blue there's this is more my oddball because there are plenty of people who do not like blue cheese we're talking right. gorgonzolas you're talking about mm-hmm. a whole bunch of different ones that I can't think of. Gorgonzola is the first that comes to mind. Roquefort. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I like blue cheese as like, kind of like feta. As a topping right. on a salad. Like if they yes. have like blue cheese cr- crumbles oh. in a salad, I like that. One thing I grew up with was was the dressings we had for for salad at home was western quote unquote french dressing which nowadays is just called western dressing uh which is kind of a sweeter version of an actual french dressing i think and Uh cheese dressing so that got me into and because it ha- usually we usually got like the jarred version, which had like has the chunks of the blue cheese versus like the craft blue cheese, which has like, mm-hmm. really, really tiny crumbles, which you can barely <laughs> perceive, but they're there, provides flavoring. Uh-huh. So I like that as kind of a condiment cheese, where I'm using it to enhance a dish, uh, a blue cheese burger. Yes. Delicious. Yes. Right. A bacon and blue burger. I'm mm, almost mm, always mm, for. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. <laughs> no. Nope. Not happening. You're saying no. You're saying no, Gary. I. It's not my thing. Like I just. It's not a flavor that I enjoy. Even as I've gotten older. Like I. What did I have recently? I got something. I got a food. Was it at a potluck? I can't remember. I got a food and I didn't know there was blue cheese in it. Mm. And the instant I tasted it, I was like, oh, and I was like, what is wrong with this dish? Because it tasted like to me, it tasted foul, like it had turned or gone bad. Oh, wow. And that's that's how I think of blue cheese, because blue cheese can be funky. It could be like 
it has really aggressive. Blue cheese has veins of edible mold. Yeah, no, nope. Which is <laughs> which I think that's why you don't like it. It's yeah. because of the it is intentionally moldy cheese. <laughs> But it's delicious. Yeah. Like, I find it delicious. But it it's in circumstances. Yeah. Circumstances. I wouldn't make a grilled cheese with blue cheese. No, absolutely not. No. no. Uh, I would. I would have like mac and cheese, popped with blue cheese. But I wouldn't use the blue cheese in the cheese sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a time and a place for it. Like, mm. like the thing that drove me crazy for the longest time is when you ordered wings, especially hot wings, like blue cheese dressing was the default and it would piss my ass off. Cause I'm like, this is America. Like we put ranch on everything. Motherfuckers. Like you should at <laughs> least have it as an option. And, and that's the thing is you like ranch. I actually kind of despise ranch. I, I'll rate it. It's okay. I do not like ranch. <laughs> well, so here's Is the it, thing. I, I will I will eat it if it's there and I can't get my blue cheese dressing. But if I can get my blue cheese dressing, I'm getting my blue cheese dressing. That, that's fair. <laughs> the there, but there are different but there are different kinds of ranch. And I have had some nasty ranch dressing in my lifetime. And I am quite the like the bratty raised in the 80s hidden valley ranch bitch like that's that's what ranch is ranch this is other stuff that's out there me. i'm like no 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 no. way over <laughs> david's just dying over there ranch oh, is you are killing me people like Fuck it because... ranch. <laughs> <laughs> people like ranch because it is so propagated throughout american culture like it is it's just gotten its talent in. And uh, I I think a lot of people are not appreciating better stuff. I like I like buttermilk based ranch. Which most of them are, but like some can some the buttermilk can be like more pronounced. Mm -hmm. Like I like the tang. I like the garlic, the parsley, the like seasoning aspect of it so more often than not i'll be honest with you i will like use a ranch mix and not actually the dressing mm. Plus, yeah i mean ranch ranch seasoning like honestly for doritos if you if you gave me a bag of cool ranch and nacho cheese i would actually probably go more for the cool ranch myself but that's not the but the dressing, the actual like liquid dressing that's used mm, in right. salad, yeah. um, or what people use to uh, ruin hot wings. Weird. Well, to be fair, this is Hidden Belly Ranch thing. is full of MSG, so that's another like thing <laughs> about it. Well, there's the, nothing wrong with people, MSG. I, I'm not saying there is, but for some people, that's a no go. So, right. Yeah. And, and, and your people, final if, you, if, if, you, if you're, you're from our day and age, you probably remember the MSG scare, which is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> because all, all MSG is is the seasoning salt for salty, sugar for, uh, for sweet, and uh, MSG for umami. Anyway. Yeah. My third one is Pepper Jack. So, Monterey Jack is just a little too mild for me. So, the peppers that are incorporated into to the Pepper Jack, uh, I really like. Although, it's, I, it's weird because... My local HEB, my local grocery store, which I only have for a month more, um, they sell Pepper Jack, but it's listed as Monterey Jack. With 
it's weird because I feel like they're trying to like avoid trademark issues or something. I don't think anybody has actually trademarked pepper jack. Mm. But so, but I also think that pepper jack and Monterey Jack in general are is just like are just basic cheeses. Um, which is one of the reasons yeah, why I say I'm a basic, basic white bitch when it comes to cheeses. Yeah, I would say with the exception of blue cheese, the three cheeses that you picked, you could probably get everywhere. anywhere. Everywhere. Blue might be a the rant, like <laughs> blue might be the we're trying to be unique and fun and different. Let's have some blue. Let's like you can have blue cheese. Well, on and, your, and, and or, as I said, most yeah. of the time that, that I'm in blue, blue is going to be usually in blue cheese dressing. Uh, but if you're going to pick up blue cheese, you're probably going to get it from the deli counter, not from the regular cheese cheese aisle. You can't. Well, you. Mm. Never mind. Actually, no, I was going to say, you, uh, probably, uh, you can get the, it from the cheese the, section, There's going to be the, the yeah, there's going to be that section but like the the regular standard like blocks of cheese, a uh, sliced cheese, right. uh, shredded cheese, yeah. bags. Like, yeah, you can't get it from there. But in the deli, uh, you might have, and it's usually a section like it, it's kind of like a regular aisle, but it's but it's right next to the deli counter, and right. they'll have like a tub or something of like crumbled blue cheese or something like that. Yeah. But it's going to be something that's more of like an in-house thing. It's not going to... Kraft isn't selling. Sell, selling blue cheese on its own. At least I don't think so. Don't call me on that. Kraft. Hmm. All right. Nice. Okay. All right. Jack. So now that we've talked about our just cheeses in and of themselves, I figured we'd also talk a little bit about like our favorite dishes. Um. Mm. Now, cheese does not have to be the main component, right? But it's somehow uh, a piece of it. So, Damon, how about you? Yeah. So, speaking of basic, oh my god, like, you took the words right out of my head. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Speaking of basic, um, fried mozzarella cheese sticks, like. When they're good, they're when they're good, they're great. Like I love them. Like like when you've got that nice pull, it's not too melty that it falls apart, but not too um, hard that it doesn't break, doesn't pull at all. Hmm. It's toothsome. What was that? So that's a little bite. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I I like a, I like it to be stringy. I love like it to be have the pull. Um, there are some places here around town, um, usually like the fast food places, where I will never eat their 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 cheese sticks ever again because they are awful. Like uh, the Burger King here up the street, I hate their cheese sticks. They're awful. They're terrible. They put nothing in the batter whatsoever and the cheese is always just i don't know if they're old it, it doesn't matter to me it, they just you literally can bite it and it just comes apart like i don't know like that's not a cheese stick to me i need to have some give and um yeah it, it's it's a it's a fat boy like yeah and they have to be hot yeah that too um and a good like um you know, marinara dipping sauce on the side, like yeah, that's what I want. Um, if we weren't gaming tomorrow, we'd probably go to a place here in town that I love that has really good cheese dips, and I would want them. But it's my guilty pleasure if I'm going out and I'm just wanting something. There are places you can get them in most restaurants. Um, yeah, just All right. Love it. I'm just gonna say this for the record, Damon. This article that you included, that you provided a link, I don't understand this yeah. part about freezing mozzarella sticks. 
Well, because you're not. Because if you did not freeze them, it would melt too fast and would just fall apart. No, 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 no. no. It says, can you freeze mozzarella sticks? Yes, you could freeze mozzarella sticks. Allow them to cool completely. Arrange them in a single layer on a baking sheet. Cover and freeze for a few hours. Once the sticks are frozen, transfer them to a zip top bag labeled with the date. Freeze for up to three months. Yeah, basically store them until you're ready to, to cook and eat. I don't understand it. What, why a, would you, there's a lot of things why would you, that... Why would you freeze them? In, uh, there's a lot of things that... Uh, if you, I mean, in this case, it's more of make them ahead of time and save them for later, maybe even weeks down the line. But there's lots of things that when you go to fry them, you need to first freeze it before you can fry it. Otherwise, it's just going to fall apart. Right. No, that part I kind of understood. My point is, what is this? Like you, you don't, you have them left over or something and you freeze them. That's the part I don't understand. <laughs> I knew that's where Jeff, no, that's where Gary was going. I knew that was where you were going. I was like, like hey, you have leftovers? What? But, okay. right. Yeah. You did not eat all the cheese? <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, to me, um, I don't know if they're going to, I mean, they probably would freeze. They'd probably freeze just fine. Like the way that they're saying is just if you made them already and you wanted to say some, like right. this is what you do uh, for a snack for later. And you can like buy boxes of like frozen mozzarella sticks. They're not my usual favorite unless you can, sounds bad, kind of refry them. Mm-hmm. Maybe bake them in the oven. Maybe I just because you get that meltiness. The breading has to have, have and, uh, enough seasoning, and um, mm-hmm. you would have to get it melty right. And the marinara sauce that you would dip it in would also have to be flavorful. Yeah. Um, and then my second, again, keeping it kind of basic. Um, Bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Like, Lord have mercy. Like, simple. Like, again, we've talked we talk about American cheese a lot, and that's sort of the thing. Like, I know it sounds weird to, like, think of, but a, an American cheese that has that great melt and on an egg and with bacon, it's just a wonderful, savory, kind of sweet um combo that just it's just delicious it's just delicious i don't i can't think of anything that i wouldn't i love have i could have it like i don't want to say every morning but i could probably have it actually i probably could have one every morning i'd be Mm. i'd be huge but um but the idea is that kind of combo interesting i agree with you a nice but I prefer sausage over bacon. But that's the only difference. It's basically the same thing. So, it's a different meat. Yeah. So I was thinking sausage, but for me, I love crisp a crispy bacon with a soft egg, like a folded um, scrambled egg, and then a melty cheese that kind of binds it all together in a kind of soft, kind of crumbly biscuit, like. Mm. Sausage you usually can't get hard. Um, uh, never mind. Okay, anyway, no but uh, <laughs> it doesn't shatter into pieces. It's yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it keeps it. But form. it the breakfast sandwich is the tool. Like that's my favorite. I will say if bacon is my go-to. Right. Actually, no, that's not true. I prefer sausage, but. In this particular instance, with cheese being a star, it's a bacon egg and cheese biscuit. D E C. D E C. In this article, I, I just randomly I threw it in. This is probably some random person that made it. This is the homemade thing. Yeah. And you can make um, bacon egg and cheese biscuits with most cheese, like you know, cheese slices. I could see a bacon, egg, and gouda. I can see a bacon, um, bacon, egg, and os- like maybe Nasiago. Oh, shit. That's ticket. 
bacon, egg, and cheese on a, on a Asi- Asiago bagel. There you go. See, this is the that interesting thing because I was like, I'm just not a fan of biscuits. Like, mm. if I have biscuits, I want biscuits and sausage gravy, motherfucker. Like, that's the thing. And outside of that, I don't ever want a biscuit. That's fair. Go away. They usually like Whatever. get too crumbly. They fall apart. Like it's just this thing, and I'm like, no, 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 no. So mm-hmm. here's the question: What do you prefer to use as the bread of a, of a uh, breakfast sandwich? Croissant. That's fair. But I'm picky <laughs> about my croissants. <laughs> Of course you are, Gary. I want a, <laughs> fuck you, bitch. I want right. a I want a flaky mm-hmm. but um soft croissant. I don't want a flaky, dry, crunchy croissant. Arby's years ago introduced a breakfast menu, and I was like, What? Mm-hmm. Arby's doing brekkie? Like whatever. So they were out for like a month or something, and I decided to stop because I was running errands or something. And it must have been like on a weekend. And I like I was next door and I saw the sign and I was like, oh, what the hell? Like, I'll see what they have. So I get in the drive through and I got their sausage, egg and cheese croissant sandwich thing. And I was like, all right, let's see how this matches up against BK, because Burger King is mm-hmm. like reign supreme in this area for me. That son bitch was so dry and so crumbly and just got all over me in the car. I was motherfucking cussing up a storm in my car. And I was like, never was a little again. Too flaky. I was like, who the <laughs> fuck served up stale, dry croissants and thinks this is what people want? It's it's the living. it's it's the croissant breakfast sandwiches from from 7 Eleven that have been in there all day, and you're, it's like five, five o'clock in the evening. Okay, listen, cr- croissants will turn into hockey pucks if you leave them on a heating element long enough. Like, <laughs> so, like, that's that's a problem. This is my, my bitch was just to give you an idea of what the <laughs> no, I know, but this is my bitch. Like, I got it fresh from the drive through, it was morning. I was so pissed. So pissed. I was like, this is bullshit. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know what like test subject group approved this. No. No. It was actually the same which they made yesterday. Maybe it was. And as much as I know, no. they don't have breakfast anymore. <laughs> this they, is probably I, why. Well, some do. <laughs> I don't think actually I don't think the one near us does. I don't think they well, actually they may have stopped. I know the one downtown. When I used to, when I worked downtown, um, had breakfast sandwich because I like going there on my way to work. Um, but I, I don't think I had their, I don't think they had the croissants. I only remember having, they had a wrap, essentially. Do That's what still, I liked. Do they have breakfast? I don't know. I never, I don't think they do breakfast anymore. It's possible they don't do it anymore. Rightfully so, motherfuckers. You you screwed it. <laughs> awful. Just downright awful. I mean, best case scenario, they just don't have croissant sandwiches, but that's beside the point. Anyways. So uh for my favorite cheese dishes, like honestly, nearly any damn dish that has cheese in it, I'm probably gonna be a fan of, but that's true. Um, I went with two things like I realized that I gravitate to if I if I can have it or if I see it or if I can order it. Oh, so salami, salumi, however you want to pronounce that kind of a meat product with some mats. Uh-uh. It could be bocconcini. It could be burrata. It doesn't matter to me. I love that combination, but I really enjoy it on a toasted like garlic ciabatta, like Christine, uh-huh. like the crunch and the creaminess and the fattiness of the meat, like especially like a mm-hmm. pepper salami, like something that has like some good seasoning to it yeah, and garlic and that, like that to me, like I could just have that as a plate. Like, you know how like they'll at a party, they'll put out mm-hmm. those out as like hors d'oeuvres and yeah. I'll be like, no bitch. I take the plate. That is my dinner. Like that. <laughs> like, that's how I feel about that. 
Um, yeah. So like 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 I don't know, and it's not a thing that you get. Like I don't really think you order it a whole lot anywhere. Unless it's like, you know, a fun kind of like twist on something that they're doing um, when it mm-hmm, comes to mm-hmm. a restaurant or it's an Italian place, like trying to be authentic yeah. Italian, I guess is the way to phrase it. So, um, but then my second go to, which I get way more often, I, but that's because I love going to Greek restaurants, is Saganaki. So, Saganaki is cheese that's fried in a small pan and it's flambéed. At least here in the U.S. and the North America, it is. So um, they take sagani, which is a, a a usually it's kind of a description of a particular um, preparation of the dish. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about six different cheeses, and they're kind of like in the feta like realm, so to speak. Um, but Basically, what they do is they melt the cheese in a frying pan with lemon juice and pepper, and then um, they typically here in the U.S., they will flambe it table side, and what they do is they add alcohol to it, and then when they light it, they go, oppa, and it, like, makes this big, like, show. And there's nothing yeah. like doing that during brunch on a Sunday in the middle of nowhere's Indiana at a restaurant with some of your best friends and all they're ordering is like omelets and you're ordering breakfast type food. And then because it's a, a, a weird mashup Greek slash American diner type restaurant, I, of course I have to order the Saganaki. I did it. I did it just last wow. October. Um, when a, some of us went to Detroit to go to a concert, um, I was with Drew and his nephew Quinn was with us and I knew that he'd probably never seen it before. And he's starting to get into food and like make like help make food and stuff like that. So I ordered it intentionally because I love the showmanship, the concept of it, where they like, you know, flambe it. And anyways, so. And then you just like mm. have that usually like on a cracker or. Um, yeah. Anyways, this is one of my favorite things. about Siri today. He's very bougie. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, the first time I ever had it, I was like, I was like, ooh, fried cheese. Like, who the hell doesn't love fried cheese? But then when it came to the table and they did the whole show, I was like, oh, now I'm sold. Like, <laughs> like this, is worth, <laughs> this is worth the price of admission. This is why I'm paying $20, $30 for a slice of cheese fried. It's not that it- expensive oh, i wouldn't pay that much for it it's it's probably about 10 bucks 12 bucks uh, but it's, it's not a, it's not it's a sli- it's not a thin slice of cheese it's not like an american cheese slice it's like probably half an inch thick mm-hmm. anyways it sounds good i i would probably i have to maybe next time i'm out at a restaurant i was just gonna say david if you and i are together and they happen to have it, like, I will definitively yeah. get it, because I know I will eat the shit out of it, and you can have a taste of it just to see if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's what I love doing. Like, it's one of my favorite dishes, so I enjoy ordering it when I'm with other people, especially if they've never had it, because then I know, like, they can have a taste of it, and they can at least have an experience, and they can see if they like it. And mm-hmm. if they like it, then they can order it on their own. If they love it, they right. order their own fucking, like, dish of it, because this one's mine. Like, you know. <laughs> say it. This one's mine. Mine. I'm obviously in that kind of a mood. Yes. So I will eat my cheese sticks, and Gary can have a saganaki. <laughs> there we go. All right, Jeff. Wow, what about Jeff. you? Jeff, so while, did, like while, it just like while Damon so, is a BBB. So, what, so B, I'm gonna reinforce basic. my B B or B W B. And you're also you're actually you're also you're also doing your your B W B, and you're also being extra. Yes. <laughs> so extra. <laughs> anyway. So again, I chose four things. It's one of those things where you, mm-hmm. you just can't decide, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So first off, mac and cheese. Who doesn't love mac and cheese? If you don't love mac, we mac had a whole cheese, episode about what it. What is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. 
and I say that in a jokingly, there nothing actually is wrong with you. I'm just uh, questioning your cho your life choices. Second, grilled cheese. Again, mm -hmm. who doesn't love grilled cheese? And you can do a lot of things with grilled cheese. Right. You know, you can even add like meat. I've even made like hot dog grilled cheese. I'd slice up a hot dog and in, into um, mm. slice up a hot dog and and put that in between cheese. Oh, so good. Second is or third is something my mom used to make for parties and such. And after I moved down here, I would occasionally get the ingredients for it. And there's only two ingredients to this dish. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. and That's salami cream cheese rolls. Mm -hmm. Where you get sliced salami, you get some cream cheese, you spread the cream cheese on the salami and roll it up. Mm -hmm. So good. And last, I've had them several times as an appetizer. Yeah. Jim's... Um, sister-in-law makes them usually for the holidays and it, it's it's such a great combination it's just delicious yeah and you could probably do this mm -hmm. with other of that like category of sausage hard hard uh uh sausages so like you could probably even do that with pepperoni yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i've even seen uh some companies actually sell like Mots wrapped in mm -hmm. salami and pepperoni. It's yeah. delicious. And it gives me that same feeling. It's just that it's better with cream cheese. It's not like the cheese wrapped uh, in meat is bad. It's just better. Right. And last but not least, I'm just putting it this as a quote unquote dish. Um, but blue cheese dressing, hear me out. It's not just a salad dressing. It's not just something you put on, uh, uh, put on hot wings. It is also a delicious substitute for mayo. Especially on a sandwich. I will not dispute the claim, but we already know how I feel about it, so yeah, this is fine. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it, is a, it, it is a little, a lot more uh, thinner than mayo, but um, it's just having like a meat and cheese sandwich with. Using blue cheese dressing instead of mayo. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, I will say this. If you're going to put blue cheese in something, whether it be blue cheese dressing or blue cheese itself, tell people. As the person who has been on the <laughs> other end, we have already had this discussion it, about it is a yeah, very decisive my, thing. My, my trauma experiences of raisins wow. being in place of chocolate chips. To me, wow. this is the same thing. And here's you're going to put blue this, cheese in something. Tell people this is where because Gary one and time I opposites. One time I had somebody's what was it pasta salad? It wasn't coleslaw? It had to be a pasta salad or something. And they decided to use blue cheese dressing, and I did not know, and I nearly spit it out immediately. And I, I said nearly because I like am a gentleman. So I like put it in a napkin instead of like, you know, splattering people with it. But I was I was not happy. No, ma'am. I, I, I don't think blue cheese. Yeah, I agree with you. Blue cheese dressing does not belong with pasta salad. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's no. That, yeah, like a pasta salad, no. Like blue cheese crumbles in a pasta salad, maybe. 
I, I still couldn't see it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, maybe I, feta. I, I, maybe I, I'm I, thinking feta. I think you might be thinking more feta. No, wait. No, I'm now. Now I'm thinking. Hold on. Although I'm not a huge fan of pasta salads in the first place, they're good. They're fine. Oh, they're sort of that's good. right. I knew that was a thing. Also, I linked to my favorite blue cheese dressing brand. Is it craft? The ones that I grew up. With. Nope. It's Marie's. Oh. Oh, in the jar. No. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't get me wrong. Uh, in a pinch, trying to save some pennies. The Roca blue cheese that that uh, craft sells, <laughs> serviceable, good. Sure about will do. The uh, <laughs> chunky blue cheese dressing and, and Marie's is much is yeah. vastly superior. But good to uh, know the versatility of blue cheese dressing. Again, you have to like blue cheese. I like blue but, cheese, but as a substitute for mayo, that's a no for me. Blue cheese and Western French dressing on a like a regular salad, delicious. It's a good combination. Um, also, was, yeah, I, I realize Gary and I are very much the opposites in multiple things, such as I like blue cheese, he does not. I like raisins, he does not. Don't get me wrong. I like raisins, but very sparingly. Like, and it's got to be the right. Just it's just got to be like the right moment of like something. An oatmeal like oatmeal raisin cookie uh -huh. would be okay with. No. Uh -oh. <laughs> I want an oatmeal cookie, not an oatmeal raisin cookie. Um, one of the quirkiest things is when I'm okay with raisins, but I'd rather have grapes. Is a broccoli salad. So in the summer. If you make a broccoli salad, I made one for a potluck last year for work, and it was a raving hit. And everybody was like, oh, my God, this is so good. You put grapes in instead of raisins, and then you put cran like dried cranberries, which are kind of like the raisins, but it was different. Like, everybody just kept raving about it. And I was like, well, I'm glad you like it. I like raisins. I made it. This is my rule with potlucks, and I think we've discussed it on the show before. You make shit that you're going to eat. Don't be experimenting. Like, experiment in your own damn house in your own damn time. Don't be doing that at the potluck. Right. So, like, make something that you know you're going to eat because if you have to take it home, you know at least your ass is going to eat it. That's what I got to say. Anyways. Very true. Very, very, very true. So have yeah. we had our fill of cheese? Never. I mean, true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally like thinking about like I have bags of of snack cheese in the refrigerator. And they're like, hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna have once once we're once we go off air. Like, no, here's here's the thing. Is, matter of fact, some matter. additional things of, of cheese dogs. Wait, okay, are you talking about like the hot dogs that are processed and made with the cheese already in them? Yes. Because that was a revelation in the 80s, I think, when those things came out. Like, I lost my mind. I could not compute and understand how that could be a thing. And and enjoyed them. I know now as an adult, I understand the whole concept of how they're made and stuff. But I would prefer hot dogs with cheese. Like, like you cut the hot dog lengthwise and then you put the cheese in the wedge yes see i i've also done like hot dogs where where i like and usually uh craft uh singles uh where i put it in the in the bun and just like put the hot hot dog and just kind of like cover it <laughs> to kind of help melt the cheese mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a cheese wrap. Um, also, there are plenty of places or plenty of other companies than just Oscar Mayer that make sausages with cheese. So they're not oh, are necessarily you hot me? dogs. No, 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 no. But they're Absolutely. the same type of thing, same idea. Yes. 
go to Aldi. They already have these like regularly. They usually have like a bratwurst or a beer wurst, a smoked Met sausage. Worst. Yeah, and it has cheese already in it. Yeah. And it's usually three bucks for like six links or five links in a package. Trust mm-hmm. me, I have bought them several times. I love, <laughs> I love like a a cheddar wurst or a cheddar met that has like the cheese in it, grilled, grilled it has to be grilled, like either on a grill or in a pan or like something that has right because I, I like the idea of the cheese kind of being little melty. <sighs> yeah, yeah, delicious, delicious. Speaking of delicious, yeah. Um... <laughs> The, the brand that I frequently ended up using, like, it basically replaced my Oscar Mayer winner, uh, was the Eckrich uh, Cheddar and Jalapeno Smoked Sausages. Delicious. Um, a burger. A burger. Can a burger not have cheese? Yes. It can. But will you ever get a burger without cheese? Uh, It depends. Like, okay. So, I went to, gosh, it's been years, but it was someone's home, and... They they were like we're gonna cook out I'm like cool great and they're like we're gonna have burgers and 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 hot dogs and what have you perfect and I was like great and I went and they had burgers and hot dogs and the they had like lettuce and tomato and onion not a lick of cheese anywhere anywhere <laughs> and I picked up my plate and I threw it off no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 but no. you, 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 you weren't you I, were like, hey, this is good, but you know what made this yeah. better? Slice of cheese. Yeah. yeah. Well, but so here's the thing: like, can you uh, can you have a burger without cheese? Absolutely. But what else am I gonna get? Like, is this good quality meat mm-hmm. that like has some nice fattiness to it, and is it seasoned well? I won't need the cheese. Like, am yeah. I going to have other toppings, condiments, like caramelized Look, onions? This, is, this isn't about, like, uh-huh. this isn't about need. <laughs> this is, this is, no, that's, that's my justification for not having cheese on the burger. You could do it, but like, I need to have a really good quality burger for there to not be cheese. But if you were just there, you knew like a gourmet highfalutin restaurant has great burgers are you going to order just a regular hamburger or are you going to order the cheeseburger i think it depends because if they get too frou-frou on my ass and they like are pulling out some weird ass cheese i'll be like no we're not we're not doing that depends on the cheese (laughs) right like if if they're like ooh, we have an amazing burger and our best seller is the burger that has yost on it and I'll be like, say what? I'll be like, no. Like, I'm adventurous, but I'm not doing that. Yeah. I mean, there are certain cheeses, but in general, cheeseburger over hamburger. If you're going to McDonald's, you're going to get a cheeseburger or hamburger. Are you going to get a quarter pounder with cheese or the quarter pounder without cheese? Yeah, but see, that's just it. Like, I, uh, I don't get burgers much. I really don't. Like, the blasphemy to me is that the standard Whopper does not have cheese. Have cheese? Oh, I know. My mother, that was one of her things, was she would get <laughs> a Whopper with everything. Uh-huh. So that was a big deal, like, because, you know, have it your way. So she would get a Whopper and she would get everything and it, and it should have cheese on it. But she'd have to order the Whopper with cheese with all the toppings, because if you didn't say it like with cheese, they wouldn't include that. They would include everything else but the cheese. Because the cheese is an overcharge. <laughs> well, yeah. Even though it's like American cheese. <laughs> right, right. Like, 
Mac and cheese I don't think is very expensive. I don't think you're getting even a gourmet American. Apparently it's 50 cents or something like that, depending on where you're at. Right. I'm just saying, like, actually, pulling up the app now. <laughs> also, according, according to uh, the Mythical Kitchen, the best cheese to make the best cheeseburger Craft. Craft American. Not the the boar's head American. Fuck. Hmm. What? So the so on my and the app, and I'm looking at it, the Whopper is six seventy five. With cheese, it becomes seven fifty. So a slice of cheese is seventy five cents. Mm-hmm. That's called inflation. It's called they charge it because motherfuckers pay it. Yep. That's how simple that is. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's how commerce works. The price will rise until people are unwilling to pay it, and then they'll stop raising the price. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Just saying. That's why at, at Burger King, my usual go to is like the Bacon King, because it already has so, so Cheese here's, and bacon. Here, here's the difference in Texas. A Whopper without cheese is five eighty nine. With cheese, is six eighty nine. Full dog. Whoa. Bacon. And Wait cheese, a minute. Jeff's yeah, life's about dog. to get cheaper. Yeah. Cost of living in Austin Wait a minute. Versus, versus Cincinnati. Much lower. Yeah, yeah. And also, just a random aside, because I just saw it, hamburger, like their basic hamburger, is two forty five. Cheeseburger is two sixty nine. So the same damn slice of cheese from hamburger to cheeseburger is twenty four cents. But from Whopper to Whopper with cheese, it's seventy five cents. I mean, it is a bigger burger, like. But it's the same like damn slice of cheese. It's it's, it's why it, it's not the same slice of cheese. It's a bigger slice of cheese because they have to cover the whole burger. I got one seventy nine for hamburger, sure two two or two nineteen for cheeseburger. So I think that price is about the same, right? No, thirty cents. Forty cents. Forty cents. Okay. That being said, David's all fired up now. There's, I am there is pissed. a cheese conspiracy <laughs> going on, and he is not having it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's I'm let's not. let's continue along this line. Oh, I don't have McDonald's app on here. What is Whataburger? Good, have? I do. Let's let's go local. Let's see, uh, start new order because apparently you can't just look at the menu. Pick up. Yeah. Okay. Like hamburger. Hamburger at McDonald's is a dollar ninety nine. Cheeseburger is two nineteen. So that is twenty cents. Cheaper just, cheese. Just a Whataburger. Uh, the nice thing about about the Whataburger app is it tells you the cost of adding the cheese. Cool thing about Whataburger, you can choose what type of cheese, American or Monterey Jack. It is 60 cents extra. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Big conspiracy. Big conspiracy. It's a thing. It's such a thing. Wow. Apparently McDonald's. Oh, wow. McDonald's. That's fine. I'm going to put in this on there. The classic McDonald's burger. Oh, it doesn't have prices because of these. Hold on. 
So with that, do we think we're done exhausting the topic of cheese for today? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we could go on and on and on about it. I mean, we could go on and on and on, but we could we can we can wrap up here and head off for today. So, my question to you, dear entourage, either in the entourage chat or just listening, uh, let us know what are your favorite cheeses. Comment below on the YouTube video, or uh, you can do it other ways. Such as going to our website, CubsOutLoud.com, commenting on the blog. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or, you know, call us. We have 361 well Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can comment on Facebook, Twitter, again, right here on YouTube where you can like, comment, and subscribe. Please do that. For the views. You can join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col or find out when we're planning and recording these shows at our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can also get various accoutrements such as the first generation logo shirt, the census by foreplay, made to be, various other things, hats, mugs, handy towels. Over in Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, some of those designs were designed by the gorgeous Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash uses slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation to, hey, I'm moving. And who knows, maybe I can upgrade, start working on an upgrade to my uh, apartment to create a studio so Damon and I can do these live together. Because <gasps> we'll be in the same city. And why, why go on Skype when you're in the same city? <gasps> hey, I'm still over here. I mean, yeah, but it's a little bit of a trip. Do you want to do that every weekend? <laughs> you missed the point. Keep going. <laughs> We're in the same city versus... Same. You're still in a different state. And on the opposite end. <laughs> In any case, you can send us the donation at paypal.me slash comes out loud. Uh, please like uh, and uh, rate us and review us over on the various podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Audible. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Set Box, Puppy Box Cub, Box, something or another. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. That's T A T A T R E C U B 79. Um, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter or pup umbra seven nine on Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. For safe for work, you can do DMA Gamer seven nine on Twitter or TikTok. And finally, um, I game with a group called Vibe Cry Productions. Um, we play every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, and every other Monday nights, alternating. Um, late in the evening, they go live. We live stream. Fun place. Check them out. Five Tribe Productions. On Twitch. And Twitch and Twitch YouTube. We were doing it on Facebook, but I don't think we do it live on Facebook anymore. But I know it's on Twitch and um, YouTube. Gary. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere on Linus Gamer Seven Three. And by that, uh, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.